You guys, guess who just got back from the DMV? This girl. And guess what she brought to the DMV? A bow bag. Oh my goodness. I am going to show you guys how to crochet your own little bow bag. I carried all of my paperwork. I carried a little book in here in case we were going to wait a long time and some extra tampons and pads but i loved it it was very had a lot of utility but it was also so cute and stylish which is super great i think when you're wearing a huge black puffer coat because it's winter it's cold it also has an adjustable <gasps> strap that is purely crocheted so you can wear it a little bit lower or like across your shoulder like how I often like wearing my bags um, because it distributes weight a little bit more evenly. I think I'm going to basically count this as my part two of my like Christmas gifts, holiday gifts series. Um, I know that in my part one, I was like, oh, I'll totally make the next part of this series more, you know, unisex. But the thing is, is like, I know my audience. I know my demographic. I'm here for the girlies. <laughs> Alright, but if you want to check out this tutorial, keep on watching. If you want to support my channel and you like what I do, make sure to subscribe, like, comment. You can follow me on all other platforms on like TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest. I often will vlog my process on TikTok, so if you ever want to see more up-to-date updates, <laughs> check out my TikTok at Yejia. But yeah, let's get into the tutorial. So to make the bow inspired bag, we are going to be making two of these bow panels. Each bow panel is going to be 30 yarn over slip stitches, eight slip stitches in the middle here, and then 30 yarn over slip stitches. And I repeated that sequence for 40 rows. You can size this bag up and down uh, however you want. Just note that you want these two yarn over slip stitch sections to be even, so whatever number you do here, do the same number here. And then you can choose how many slip stitches you want to do for this middle section. Um, I chose eight just because I thought that that size was nice, um, but you can definitely go longer or shorter depending on what size bag you want to create. And as you can see, I've already made my first one, so I'll go ahead and show you how I made this. What you are going to need for this project is your yarn for your bag. What I'm doing for this bag, because I just wanted to use yarn that I already had on hand, um, but the yarn that I had on hand that I wanted to use was a slightly thinner yarn, um, but I'm doubling up on my yarn in order to make it a bit thicker. If you don't want to deal with doubling up your yarn, I would recommend getting a thicker yarn, probably closer to a bulky weight yarn. And then I am using a five millimeter hook and get your stitch markers. Mine are bobby pins. Double up that yarn. And you're going to hold both of them in one hand, just like so. And from here, I'm going to create my slip knot. So to create a slip knot, you are going to loop it around like so, twist, and then pull up your working yarn, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that right onto my hook. So, so far we have a slip knot on our hook, and from here I am going to chain the number of chains that I need, which again for myself and my bow panel is 30 yarn over slip stitches, 8 slip stitches, then 30 yarn over slip stitches. So then in total that's 68 chains. However, I am going to be utilizing two turning chains and you do not work turning chains. So in total I'm going to be chaining 70 chains to begin with. And to make a chain, you are going to yarn over and pull that up through. Yarn over, pull up and you are going to continue chaining until you get the desired number of chains for your size of bag. All right, so we are now done with 70 chains and I am going to do yarn over slip stitches for the first 30 stitches. And again, we are treating those last two chains as turning chains, meaning we are not going to work into those chains. 
And again, I usually like to work into the backs of my stitches, meaning I am going to slightly turn my work a little bit and I'm gonna skip those first two stitches or those first two chains and I'm going to start working into the third chain from my hook. To do a yarn over slip stitch, you are going to set up your yarn over on your hook, slightly twist your work so you're working into the backs of your stitches, yarn over once more, and then you are going to pull that up and through both loops on your hook. So again, we are going to yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into the backs of our stitches, yarn over once more, pull up, and pull through. Yarn over, back of our stitch, yarn over once more, pull up, and pull through. So I'm going to do this for the first 30 stitches. And if you're doubling your yarn like me, it can be easy for your yarn to kind of split. So make sure that when you are working your hook underneath the backs of your stitches, you are indeed going under both strands of your yarn. And that's only applicable if you were doubling up your yarn like I am. So I have completed my 30 stitches. And at this point, I'm actually going to use my stitch marker, AKA my bobby pin to mark out that last 30th stitch that I just created. And this is just to differentiate between my yarn over slip stitch sections and then my slip stitch sections. Honestly, the further along you go, like the more rows that you make, the clearer the distinction between sections becomes. But in the first couple of rows, because they're essentially slip stitches, like all of them, it gets a little tricky to tell. So I would definitely recommend marking out your stitches at this point. So for the next eight stitches, I'm going to be working just slip stitches. So again, I'm going into the backs of my stitches. I notice how I didn't start off with a yarn over and instead I'm just going to yarn over and pull up. So again, not starting with a yarn over, just going through the backs of my stitches, yarn over and pull up. And I would also advise that you try to keep kind of a looser tension when you are creating these stitches just because otherwise slip stitches tend to really bunch up. Um, and I tend to have a really tight tension when I crochet, so I think it's more of a reminder for myself sometimes. <laughs> and so now that I have completed my middle section of eight slip stitches, I'm gonna resume doing my yarn over slip stitches for my final 30 stitches on the row. So again, yarn over, go through the backs of your stitches, yarn over and pull through both loops. Just continue that until end of row. So this is what the end of your first row should be looking like. And at this point, I am going to chain two to use as my turning chains and turn my work. And again, you do not work into your turning chains. But from here, I am going to be working into the backs of my stitches. And so again, I'm going to be using the same exact um, yarn over and then slip stitch and then yarn over slip stitch stitch sequence um, and at this point the only difference is where I am placing my stitch and where I'm placing my stitch is I'm going into that first actual stitch so skipping those two turning chains and I'm working into the back of my stitch just like so and then doing my yarn over slip stitch and by working into the back, you are giving yourself this really pretty braided effect on either side of your bag. So I am now at my middle slip stitch section and I am going to again go through the backs of my stitches to create my slip stitches. Then I'm back at my stitch marker. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that right off. And I'm going to do my yarn over slip stitches from here to the end of my row. And essentially that is how you create the bow panel, like the sides of your bags. Um, you are just going to repeat that same sequence of stitches over and over and over again until you have the desired sort of height for your bag. For myself, I am completing 40 rows. And you can start to see that really pretty braiding um, being kind of shoved up <laughs> on one side or the other. Okay, this is my last stitch 
on my last row. And now I'm just gonna pull up my yarn. I've got my scissors and I'm going to cut my yarn. All right, great. So we have our little bow tie <laughs> um, panel here. And at this point, you're going to wanna make sure that you make two of these so that you know you have either side of your bag. Okay, now that we have both bow panels done, what we are going to do is cinch the middle portion here so that it actually looks a lot more bow-like. Um, and to do that, we are going to take an extra piece of thread or yarn, and you're going to thread that through a tapestry needle. So in order to cinch this bow up, we are going to insert our needle into the middle of the middle section of our bow. And to do so, you are just going to insert that needle, skip a few rows, go under another row, skip a few rows, etc, etc. And to like make it really neat, I tend to try to like almost pre-crumple <laughs> the slip stitch section um, just to kind of feel out where I should be inserting my needle. Another thing that I'm going to be wary of because I'm going to be using some of these seams in order to attach different parts, I am not going to go through like the bottom row or the top row. I'm going to leave those alone. And then once you have reached the bottom of your panel, uh, you're going to go and go back through those stitches until you are back at your original stitch here at which point I'm going to pull on both of my ends of this thread also I wouldn't recommend cinching up the thread like too too much you do want to be cognizant like this is the bag so like you need to put stuff in there and then like this middle is going to be you know the the smallest part of your bag so whatever you do um, to this middle part, that's about how big your bag is gonna be. So I wanna cinch it in order to like, kind of really get the bow effect, um, but not too much. And then I've just tied off my yarn and I'm gonna go ahead and trim those ends. Okay, so once you are done with one of your panels, you are going to do the exact same process to your other panel, ensuring that you're cinching that middle portion pretty evenly on both. Okay, so now we are going to connect our bow panels. So I'm gonna start connecting the edges of my two bow panels together. And what I ended up doing in order to seam the edges together is that I'm actually going to create a single crochet seam on these two edges right here. And to do so, I am first going to line up the rows so that they match because this is going to be the outside of your bag. So you just kind of want to make sure things are kind of neat. So I'm just going to start pinning these two edges together, um, aligning the rows as best as I can. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and take an extra strand of yarn that I have and create a little slip knot. And I'm gonna go ahead and go underneath sort of this first little area, this corner here, and this corner as well. And I'm going to slip up my slip knot. And I'm, I'm going to uh, bunch up all of my ends so that I can weave them in all together. And from here, we are going to start going into the sides of our stitches in order to create a single crochet seam. So essentially, I'm gonna go into the side here, and then through the side here as well. And I'm crocheting around my ends in order to weave them in. And to do a single crochet, all you're gonna do is insert your hook where it needs to go. So to do a single crochet, you're going to yarn over once, pull that up, yarn over again, and then pull through those two loops on your hook. And here you can see that it's getting seamed up on the side together and that the rows pretty much align. So here I am just going to continue doing my single crochet seam down the two sides of my bow panels making sure that I'm stopping every so often just to make sure that I am in alignment on each side. So the sides of my bow panels are all seamed together and now I am going to 
seam the bottom edge of my bow panels together as well. For this, um, just because it is going to be the bottom of the bag, uh, so I want it to be a little bit more sturdy. I am still going to double up on my yarn. I know that when I was seaming the sides, I only used one strand of yarn, which I think is fine, honestly, but for the bag, I just want like that extra bit of sturdiness. So with my doubled up yarn, I have already created my little slip knot. Align my stitches as best as I can, and I'm gonna go through and underneath my first set of stitches right here. So I'm gonna go under that, I'm gonna go under that. So these are stitches on either side of the bow panel on the bottom edge. And then I'm going to slip up my slip knot. And I'm going to weave in my ends as well as I go. Um, but I'm going to start off by chaining one. And then I'm going to go into my next stitch the next stitch on the other side as well. And I'm crocheting around my ends in order to seam them all together. But again, I'm just doing a single crochet seam. And as you can see by crocheting around the ends, you are weaving them in as you go and it looks pretty much seamless. All right, so I'm just going to continue seaming this edge all the way uh, until I get to my other side. All right, so I have just um, done my last single crochet seam right here in the corner and I'm gonna pull out my yarn Go ahead and trim it and then at this point I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and thread my yarn my ends of my yarn through my tapestry needle So I've got that threaded on my needle and I'm gonna go ahead and weave my ends in so to create the middle tie portion that goes around the middle of your bow panels, I am gonna go ahead and start off with a slip knot. And again, I've doubled up my yarn and I'm going to start off by chaining 40. So that is 40 chains for me. And I'm gonna give myself one additional turning chain. So again, we do not work this chain. And starting from the second chain from our hook, I'm gonna slightly turn my work so I'm working into the backs of my stitches but I'm just gonna give myself slip stitches all the way uh, down this row. But yeah, I'm just gonna continue working slip stitches all the way down this row, uh, and then I will meet you back up at the end of my row. All right, that is my last slip stitch for this row. And then once you're done with your last stitch, go ahead and give yourself one turning chain, and then turn your work. And from here, you are going to work into the backs of your stitches. Uh, giving yourself slip stitches So essentially you are going to work several rows of slip stitches through the back loop only basically until you have a Tie this is your tie until you have a tie section that is big enough or thick enough uh, to your liking to cover your middle section of your bow panels additionally another thing to note is that if you like me are going to be using a little magnetic clasp in order to you know close and secure your bag um, you're going to want to make sure that the thickness of this tie portion is big enough to be able to like sew this clasp on it if that makes sense so yeah i'm going to continue making my slip stitch rows and i will be back once i'm complete with that so i have finished my middle tie portion and i have worked 15 rows total as i'm working these rows i'm also making sure to wrap it around my um, actual bag and just kind of checking that I do like the thickness uh, for my bag size and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my clasp that I have and then I'm going to sew them on onto either side so at this point I have sewn on my little magnetic clasps on either side and there's a couple of different ways I think that you could do this realistically. I think you could either go in with a crochet hook and just slip stitch seam the actual like tie portion onto the bag. What I think I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and I'm going to take 
some extra yarn. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew it because I think it'll be a little faster. I'm gonna show you how I'm going to make the bag strap. I'm going to be using the thermal stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start off by chaining six. Now the six stitch is your turning chain, so you're not going to be working that chain. And from here, I'm gonna go into the second chain from my hook into the backs of my stitch and I'm going to single crochet for the rest of this row. So now I'm going to chain one and turn my work. I am going to go into the back of my stitch. So I'm gonna to go to the back loop right there. And then I'm going to be going into the front of my loop from the previous row. And from here, I'm also simultaneously going to weave in my end. So I'm gonna hold it on top of my work, but I'm going to yarn over and pull up and complete a single crochet stitch. So again, I'm going through the backs of my stitches on the row that I'm currently working on, and then I'm going through the front of my previously worked row, yarning over, pulling up, and completing a single crochet stitch. And then finally, through my last stitch, going through the back, and then going through the front, and making a single crochet around that. Now I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. And I'm gonna go through the back of my stitch. And then through that front of my previous row. And single crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that sequence of stitches until I have reached my desired length for my strap. Okay, so I have now finished my strap, or at least I'm on the last row of my strap. Um, and I just wanna show you really quickly how to do this last row, uh, because with the thermal stitch, the last row is just a slightly different um, than all the rows that you've been working previously. So I've gone ahead and you know I've done my chain one, turned my work. And instead of going through just the back of my stitch, I'm going to be going through the entire actual stitch properly. And then going through the front loop from my previous row, like we've been doing, and creating my single crochet. So again, going through the proper, like the whole stitch, and then the front from the previous row. And in total, my strap is just about 40 inches long. I didn't end up counting my stitches or the number of rows that I did just because that would be way too many rows. <laughs> um, so whenever I do um, a lot of rows like that, I tend to just more so rely on measurements rather than like the actual number of rows. Now I'm gonna show you how to create the adjustable portion to the bag, which I think is just so, so nifty. Um, I got this technique from Little John's Yarn. I will link down the original video that I learned the technique from in the description box below. Um, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is create my slip knot, and I'm going to start off by chaining seven. Now I am going to slip stitch into the very first little chain that I have right here. So I'm going to slip stitch that whole thing together. And now I'm going to chain three. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to go into the fourth chain in my original ring, which would be one, two, three, four. I'm going to go into that stitch and slip stitch that all together. And this is basically the buckle. Um, so if like you have seen adjustable straps, uh, they'll usually have some sort of like hardware that will be the buckle, but this is basically so that you don't have to buy like separate hardware and instead it just, you've created the hardware. With the chain three portion that we created um, on the ring, underneath that we are going to insert our strap. So you can either use a hook to help you out with this or I just kind of like squeeze it in, honestly. And then at this point, we are going to go ahead and fold over the strap and sew this together. So this is that circle, the ring, buckle mechanism that we created. 
We are, and this is the chain three portion right here. And we are going to go ahead and I'm gonna use the end of my yarn in order to sew this together. Okay, so my camera actually died while I was filming this portion. So I already kind of like secured all the, we uh, all the ends in and all that. So let me just like try to explain it to you guys uh, without having to <laughs> completely redo it. I'm really sad about that. But essentially, I went to the side of my bag. So I'll kind of show you on this side. I won't make it permanent, but you're only going to really need to do this to one side of your bag. Um, but you're going to go a couple of stitches away from the center of the, like where the two bow panels meet, where you made that seam. You're going to go about two stitches away from it. You're going to hook up your yarn. And then go ahead and chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to reconnect it to the other side of that side seam, um, to the other side of that panel. And then you're gonna slip stitch that together. So you see how essentially like that creates a sort of gap for your strap to be able to sort of thread through. Um, but from here, I also chained one and I turned my work and I went back through each chain that I had created and done a single crochet. All right, so I have gone ahead and I sewed down this part or this end of my strap around the chain portion of my little buckle mechanism thing <laughs> and I've also gone ahead and uh, weaved in any ends just so that it is a little bit neater. I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to go ahead and take my strap on the other side so this is not the side that has the buckle. This is the side with the buckle. I'm going to go ahead and thread that through that little gap that I created for my strap and then making sure that your work is not twisted. I am gonna go ahead and take this end of the strap and you're gonna shove it underneath the ring. So shove that underneath and then slide it on through. All right, so now you have the adjustable strap portion. If the adjustable strap portion is too confusing, you can quite literally just sew on, slip stitch, whatever seaming method you want to use the ends of your strap to the sides of your bag. Um, that way you won't have to create this little hole and you won't have to create the little buckle mechanism thingy, but I just thought it was just so cool and I wanted to share. Um, but again, making sure that your work is not twisted, you're going to go ahead and sew this part of your strap down to the other side of your bag. Okay, so that is your finished bag with an adjustable strap. And here is your finished bag, your bow bag. There you go. Um, I honestly really like it as a little purse, even though I really like it as like more like a handheld purse, like right there. I also really like the adjustable strap so that I'm able to wear it cross body and just wear it as um, over the shoulder and like distribute that weight a little bit more evenly just because I do have back issues. <laughs> there you go, there is the finished purse. So the construction of the bow purse was definitely very inspired by my other bow projects that I've done. I've done a bow hair accessory and I've done a bow off the shoulder top now. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to see more updates on a daily basis, make sure to check out my TikTok. You can follow me on my Instagram and my Pinterest, even though I don't post there as often. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.